I just, uh, I just really want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, this has been a crazy, crazy season for all of us. And I just think that it does our hearts well uh, to gather together, even online, and to take time to open the scriptures together and journey through a section of the Bible together. I believe this is uh, powerful for our hearts, particularly in this difficult, challenging season. And uh, today we are in part three of a series that's called Jesus Wisdom. And uh, next weekend, Aaron picks back up, uh, Pastor Aaron Buer picks back up with part four of the series. But let me begin, let me begin today's conversation. It was just a question for you. And the question is this, uh, what two words would you use kind of to describe yourself? Uh, pick a couple different words that you would use to describe yourself. And I, I've written some down here. Just try some of these on to see if any of them fit that might be your words. And so uh, some possibilities are, you might say, I'm kind or helpful or maybe patient. That might describe you. Or perhaps intense, driven, and restless. I wonder if one of those fit. Or possibly a consistent, uh, dependable, disciplined might describe you. Or uh, perhaps this is a season where you're just not at the top of your game. And you might say, listen, I feel disappointed. I feel a little bit aimless right now. I, quite frankly, this is just a season of, of brokenness. I'm, I'm, Jeff, I'm broken. So what, what couple words might you use to describe you? And I want to begin there because there is a, a place in the scripture, it's kind of the very center of our study today, where Jesus described himself by using two words. It's uh, Matthew chapter 11, and Jesus said this, he says, I am, I am this, and I am that. Did any of you know the passage of scripture I'm talking about, where Jesus says, I am this, and I am this. Let me, let, me, let me help you a little bit. And some of you may know this. Let me kind of build into his statement. Jesus said, uh, he said, uh, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And then he said, uh, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am, and there are the two words. And in the New International Version of the Bible, the two words that are used there are, I am gentle and humble. These are two words Jesus used to describe himself. I, I don't know what two words you would use to describe yourself, but in this self-description of Jesus, as he calls the crowds to himself, he just said, I am gentle and I am humble. These are two words Jesus used to describe himself. What two words would you choose for yourself? Now, uh, early in the week, I was working on this material, walked into our kitchen. My dear wife, Chris, was standing there. And listen, we started going out when we were in the spring of our senior year of high school. Like, we've been hanging out since I was 17 years old. And so I asked my wonderful bride, what two words would you use to describe me? She thought for a minute. I said, hey, I'll go first. I think you, two words that describe you, babe, are uh, organized and caring. Organized and caring, that describes you. And without a whole lot of thought and without needing much time, she said, oh, and you are intense and perfectionistic. What does she know? I mean, we've only been hanging out for four decades. <laughs> Those are the two words she chose, intense and perfectionistic. Well, she's wrong. And now I have three words, intense, perfectionistic, and uh, just a wee bit defensive. So here's my challenge in looking at this passage of scripture today. It's kind of like, okay, Mr. Intense and Perfectionistic, meet uh, Mr. Gentle and Humble. And I think there are some things to learn here. If you'd asked me at the beginning of the week, okay, this weekend, what's this sermon about? I'd say, okay, we're in this series called Jesus Wisdom. And uh, this weekend, we're gonna be looking at the humble Jesus. I just said, the, the focus of the message is humility. That's still true. 
But there's another word that factors in heavily today, and it's just this word. It's the word rest. Because as Jesus called people to himself, the gentle humble one. He uses the term rest twice. Uh, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you, I will give you rest. Uh, Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I'm gentle, what? Gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I, I think as we look at the humble Jesus today, we're also gonna learn a lot about rest or the opposite of rest exhaustion. Listen, today's conversation is a conversation for the tired. It's a conversation for those of us who are tired because we are carrying things that we simply shouldn't be carrying. Look, I know that today's conversation is for me, and I suspect that today's conversation just might be for you. Uh, Three verses, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29, and 30 is the focal point of our study. And in these three verses, we find a three-part invitation, an invitation that Christ extends to us today. Part one of the invitation is simply this. Jesus invites us to himself. He invites you to him. This is uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, where Jesus says, come to me, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's an invitation to himself. Jesus says, come to me. I, I just want you to n- note something here that if I, you know, asked you kind of, you know, take your Bible and I said, okay, where, where in your Bible would you find material on what I would call the wisdom of pursuing humility? Where, where serious question, where in your Bible would you go to find the wisdom of walking humbly and a, kind of the folly of walking in arrogance? Any, any ideas? Here's a clue. It's where we spent a ton of time in April and in May and in June. It's it's the Proverbs of our Bible. Loads of Proverbs on the power of wisdom, the, uh, the, the power of humility, the wisdom of humility, and the folly of pride. So let me just, let me just briefly show you three. Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2, you find these words. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. See, to find information on the wisdom of humility, you go to the Proverbs. Another one is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. Before a downfall, the heart is haughty. That's about arrogance and pride. But, but, listen, but, but humility comes before honor. Now, that's the proverb we take and have the American proverb or English proverb, pride comes before a fall. But the other part here, uh, humility comes before honor. Honor, where do you go to find the wisdom of humility? We say, man, go to the Proverbs. Uh, One last one, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 23. Pride brings a person low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. Pride takes a person down. The lowly in spirit gain honor. Where do you go to find the wisdom of humility? You go to the Proverbs. This is a good answer. This is a correct answer, but there's a second answer. That is to find the wisdom of humility. We not only go to the Proverbs, we come to a person. This is why Jesus invites us to himself, to the humble Jesus. Back to the verse, he says, uh, come to me, come, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me. It's an invitation to a person. My friends, this is huge. Because I know that some of you are in a space where you're kind of going, you know, Jeff, I'm kind of in a phase of life. Believe it or not, I've lived in West Michigan for a long time, but I've never really explored Christianity. 
And I desire to explore Christianity, but quite frankly, I'm finding some problems with Christianity. Now listen, first and foremost, this is not a conversation about exploring a religion. It is a conversation, first and foremost, about coming to a person. Listen to this. Those of you who are in seeking mode, those of you who are in the exploration process, hear the whisper of Christ to you. Come to me. Come to me. Jesus gives an invitation to himself. And some of you, even right now, are kind of reflecting back on a season in life where you would say, that was the season when I, and this is actually language that is used, when I came to Christ. Some of you reflect back, uh, the summer between your sophomore and junior year in high school, you were invited to a Christian camp, you sat there, it's like God was speaking just to you, and you realize this just wasn't about religious ritual, this was about a connection, a life-giving connection to the crucified, resurrected Jesus, and you would look back to that summer between your sophomore and junior year, and you would say, that was the summer I, that was the summer I came to Christ. Some of you would say, I remember the Easter Sunday morning. I remember where I was sitting in a church building. And for the first time, it was like the lights came on and I understood that Jesus was calling me to himself. The crucified, resurrected Jesus who died for me and who lives for me, that Easter Sunday was the day I came to Christ. That is so powerful and so real and so true. But listen, if that was five years ago or 15 years ago or 25 years ago, I think we need to recognize today that this invitation that Jesus gives where he says, come to me, come to me. This is an ongoing invitation. Let's look back at the verse together. If we can go back to uh, verse uh, 28. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I would like to suggest to you that this isn't just a one-time shot that you did 17 years ago. Jesus is whispering this into your life every day. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is an ongoing invitation. This is an ongoing invitation. It's an invitation that we should hear at four o'clock in the morning and we wake up and we begin to itemize each and every decision we have to make, each and every complexity and each and every fear. And at four o'clock in the morning as we toss and turn, perhaps our Lord is whispering, come to me, you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. It's an ongoing invitation. For those of us standing in our kitchens and the two words your spouse uses to, uses to describe you as intense and perfectionistic and something whispers, come to me and I will give you rest. It's those days when you look into the mirror and the person that is looking back at you is self-focused, self-centered, self-absorbed, and perhaps wallowing in self-loathing. It's the ongoing invitation, come to me, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Part one of the invitation, Jesus invites us to himself. It's connected, it's intimate, it's relational. Jesus says, come to me. And if you go, well, that's great, but how do I qualify? <laughs> the only qualifier Jesus gave here is that you be really, really tired. <laughs> Come to me, all you, all you who are weary and burdened. So let me just ask you, are you tired today? And do you know why? And some of you go, yeah, come on, Jeff. Of course I'm tired. I mean, life is heavy. And right now with this stupid virus thing, it's even heavier. Listen, life is heavy. But sometimes we make it heavier than it needs to be because we're carrying things we simply shouldn't 
be carrying. Part one of the invitation is to, to come to Christ, come to him, come to a person. Part, part two of the invitation is to come and learn. Part two of the invitation is to learn. He, in, he invites you to learn. Hey, check, out, check out the very next verse. It's verse 29 of Matthew 11. He says, take my yoke upon you and what? Three words, and, and what? And, and learn from me. He says, listen, I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. So say the first three words together, come to me. Ready? Just wherever you are, ready? Come to me. Now say the next three words, learn from me. Ready? Learn from me. Now together, if you will, come to me, learn from me. He says, listen, go to school here. Join yourself to me. Come to me and learn from me. That first part there, take my yoke upon you. <laughs> that yoke thing, it's, it's not about eggs. It's about uh, oxen or beasts of burden. Uh, check out this image here. It's just two oxen. And those oxen are joined together by by a yoke, and then attached to the yoke would be a, either a wagon or a plow. You yoke yourself in order to, in order to pull. And so uh, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I think the idea here is that we're supposed to take off whatever yoke it is we're carrying in order to replace that with the yoke of Christ. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. It's an invitation to learn. Take my yoke and learn. Now, if you ask the question now in Jesus' day, what yoke was it that many people were carrying that Jesus is pleading with them to take off? I think a clear answer is something I would call the yoke of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were a pressure group in first century Israel that not only pulled people back to the scriptures, but expanded upon the scriptures, added to the scriptures in order to regulate and itemize every action of every moment of every waking day. And it was exhausting. Our time is being spent mostly in uh, Matthew 11 today. If you were to go down to the last week of Jesus' life in Matthew chapter 23, this is how Jesus described the Pharisees. Jesus would say they tie up, what, what? Heavy, cumbersome loads. And where do they put them? They put them on people's shoulders. And Jesus would go on to say, and they don't do a thing to lift that burden off people. They do nothing to ease your burden. Jesus is very truthful and direct here. The yoke of the Pharisees is an impossible yoke to carry. Try harder, do more, never enough. Try harder, do more, never enough. And Jesus says, you need to take off that yoke and put on my yoke. I'm gentle and humble and you will find rest for your soul. So we're going like, man, I'm grateful the Pharisees are gone and we don't have that yoke anymore. <laughs> so a question, uh, what yoke are you carrying? What yoke are you, what, what, what burden are you carrying through life? And some of your exhaustion and weariness is simply because you're carrying something that you should not be carrying through life. What yoke are you carrying? Look, I could list dozens of these, but I've, I've, I've picked four just to give you an idea of the type of yoke that we can carry through life. Just one is just the yoke of perfectionism. The yoke of perfectionism. Uh, the, 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 the perfect holiday, the perfect vacation, the perfect house, the perfect meal. We fret about every single detail and it can be exhausting. Perfectionism can exhaust you. And Jesus would just whisper, take that yoke off and put on my yoke. I'm humble and gentle and you will find rest, but you're going to have to take my yoke. A cousin to the yoke of perfection is just the yoke of control. 
needing to control everything in our life and often needing to control key people in our lives. It's the yoke of control. You say, well, when I'm able to control the people in my life, it's, a, it's effective, it's good, and it's, it's, I'd like to suggest, it's really, really tiring, the yoke of control. Let me ask you, what yoke are you carrying through life? And your Lord is whispering, I invite you to learn from me and to take my yoke. Listen, among the people of Ada Bible Church, I know that a ton of you are carrying what I would just call the yoke of success. The yoke of success. You say, I just have to be successful at what I'm doing. Now, well, successful, that's, that seems like a good yoke. What's wrong with that? Um, success, like that half gallon of milk that languishes in your refrigerator, the problem of success is that it has a relatively short self life. Shelf life, a relatively short shelf life. Say that three times fast. Uh, the, the idea behind success is this. It's not just becoming successful, it's the maintaining success. The question success demands is this. What have you done for me today? What have you done for me today? Uh, sometime back, I was uh, hanging out with an attorney from our congregation who had had an incredibly successful year, but was coming to the end of the year and in a moment of dejection said, and now the odometer rolls back to zero. You see, success has a uh, relatively short shelf life. What have you done for, no, 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 that was last quarter, that was last year, that was last semester, that was last season. Uh, success can be exhausting. Say, man, Jeff, I think success is a, a good thing. Listen, it is. Just a little reminder here that often when we end up with an idol in our life, a counterfeit God, it's because we take a good thing Whatever that good thing is, our kids, uh, education, business success, and we make that the ultimate thing. When we take a good thing, we, make, we take something good and we try to turn it into God. Success can be an exhausting burden to have to carry season after season, semester after semester, quarter after quarter, year after year. And Jesus whispers, come to me and learn. I have another way. Come to me and learn. One final one here is just uh, fear. Uh, what's often called, one particular type of fear, though fear has uh, lots of varieties, is what is called you know, FOMO, the, the fear of missing out. My goodness, I just think it's so much harder for younger adults today, teenagers and younger adults, than it was when I was younger. Because um, with this wonderful little device called a cell phone, I am empowered <laughs> to discover what, everybody else is doing anywhere, all the time, at any time, without me. And there can be an anxiety. I'm not included. I'm not included. I'm not included. How do I get included, my friends? What yoke are you carrying? It might be a fear. And specifically, a fear of not being included, a fear of not being in the mix, a fear of not being in the middle, the fear of being left out. Jesus would whisper, you need to take that yoke off. I have a yoke for you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I'm humble and I'm gentle and you will find rest for your souls. That term, learn from me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble. If I'm understanding this passage correctly, it is something about the very gentleness and humility of Christ that he's asking us to learn. He's saying, learn humility from me. Learn gentleness from me. Learn humility from me. This is the yoke that I'm asking you to carry. Remember the way Jesus came. He's placed in a manger at his birth. Peasant class parents 
<laughs> the, the people that get invited to uh, the view the baby are, are shepherds. Not exactly the powerful and the socially elite. Not exactly the who's who. Jesus is there, Mary and Joseph, and shepherds are there. And I think Jesus would say, learn, remember the manger. Learn from me. Learn humility from me. You transition into public ministry. There's a time when moms bring their toddlers to Jesus to have him put his hands on them and bless them. Jesus' disciples are like, what kind of operation do you think we're running here? Do you think we're running a preschool? And Jesus rebukes the disciples for rebuking the moms. And Jesus takes time to lay his hands on children who had no status and no clout and no influence. And I think Jesus would say, learn from me, learn from me. It's something he's constantly trying to teach his disciples. That down is up. It happens in the manger and it happens with the toddlers. The night before Jesus' crucifixion, he's still trying to teach this lesson. In Eastern culture, you didn't handle people's feet. This was the job for the lowest person on the totem pole, the person on the lowest rung of the social ladder at the Last Supper. Jesus puts a towel around his waist, takes a basin, and one by one by one, he washes his disciples' feet. Once again, he's teaching them, listen, listen, down is up. Come to me, learn from me. I'm humble and gentle, learn from me. And then you come to you know, the, the cross, the crucifixion. And in writing to Jesus followers in the city of Philippi, the apostle Paul would describe Jesus' attitude toward the crucifixion this way. Paul would say, he, he what? He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death, even, even crucifixion death, even humiliating crucifixion death. He humbled himself. It's an invitation to learn. And our Lord whispers, come to me, learn from me, learn from me. With the manger, with the toddlers, with the feet, with the cross, this is the way of the Christ. This is the way of the cross Learn from me. This is my yoke. And right now I'm going, well, it's wonderful. So I take off one yoke and I put on another yoke. It's still exhausting. It's still heavy. And that's what we might think until we get to part three of the invitation. Part three of the invitation is simply <laughs> to lighten up. <laughs> It's an invitation to a person. We get invited to a person. We get invited to learn. We get invited to lighten up. Verse 30, the last verse in this section, Jesus says this. He says, for my yoke is, it's easy on your shoulders. My, it is a yoke, but my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, I, I promise you, take the yoke that you're carrying and replace it with mine. You will find it easier and lighter than whatever it is you're carrying. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Is light. What Jesus is asking us to carry is what I would just say, the yoke of humility. It's his yoke. And we've managed to make it this far in today's teaching without describing or defining exactly what humility is. Uh, our Australian friend, John Dixon, wrote a powerful book called Humilitas, The Power of Humility. And in it, John says something like this. John says, uh, humility is not the absence of strength, but using my strength in the service of others. See, humility is not weakness. Humility is not the absence of strength. It's, it's using my strength, holding my strength, using my strength in the service of others. This is the yoke of Christ. This is the yoke of humility. It's using my financial strength in the service of others. Using my position at work in the service of others. It's using my influence, my social capital in the service of others. It's using my humor <laughs> in the service of others and not to downgrade others. 
It's being uh, strong enough to offer an apology. It's being strong enough to receive an apology. It's being strong enough to awaken each day and to be able to look at our strengths and be able to go, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. This is the yoke of Christ. And Jesus would simply say, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How could he say that? My yoke is easy. My, my burden, my yoke's easy. Not the one you're carrying. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. How? It still feels, I mean, offering yourself in the service of others feels pretty tiring to me. Why would, it, why would it be a way of lightening up? I think there's first, when we carry the yoke of Jesus, I believe that we find freedom. I believe that we can taste a freedom that we perhaps have not tasted for a long time be, because it's the freedom of living in concert with the person God created you to be. Rather than working against who God created to be, I begin to live in concert with who God created me to be. And I believe there's a freedom there that is, that is lighter than the yokes we tend to carry. Uh, secondly, I think that when you take on the yoke of humility, the yoke of Christ, I think you find yourself empowered. I think it's like the Holy Spirit desires to cooperate with you as you use your strength in the service of others. And I believe there is a supernatural strength that can carry you as you take the yoke of humility. I believe that you find freedom. I believe that you find yourself empowered. And thirdly, I believe that you can find the favor of God. The yoke is easy and the burden is light because you begin to experience God's favor. And this is exactly the term, exactly the expression that our Bible uses about the way of humility, about the yoke of humility, about Christ's yoke. You don't find this in Matthew or in the Proverbs. It's near the end of your New Testament, James chapter four, verse six, where James says, listen, God opposes the proud. But what, what, two words, but shows favor to who? God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. That first term should concern us. The word oppose means to be actively against. God opposed, it's like God saying, listen, I am not with you on this one. Well, I just want to be alpha dog. I just have to be recognized. I just, I must be successful. I think God steps back and says, I, I am not with you right now. God opposes the proud, can be actively against arrogance it shows his favor to the humble. And so I think between finding freedom and being empowered and experiencing God's favor, I believe that there is an honest shot at escaping some of the exhaustion we experience and finding a rest that we have not tasted for a long time. Again, Jesus worded it this way, my yoke for my yoke is easy and my burden light. He invites me to lighten up. Jesus is calling to the crowds. It's not just his inner circle of disciples. And Jesus invites, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Now, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I'm humble, I'm gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Today, we should uh, be compelled to ask some challenging questions. <laughs> One question, the question at the top, uh, what two words describe you? And I, I'm just guessing that many of us would answer with something other than gentle and humble. Just acknowledge that. That's where you are. That's your starting point. What two words describe you? A second powerful question is just the question, what yoke are you carrying? Do you know? Do you know what in your life that you're carrying around, toting around, that is simply making life harder, more exhausting, and more draining than it needs to be? Question number two, what yoke are you carrying? 
what yoke are you carrying? And question number three is just, will you respond to his invitation today? Because today he offers an invitation to come to himself. My friend, today he offers an invitation to learn. And today he offers an invitation to lighten up. He offers this to me today. He invites you today. And so may you find the favor of God as you listen, as you learn, as you remove your yoke and carry his. May you find his favor as you draw near to the humble Jesus.